Hello and welcome back. It is uh, now the second month of the year. I haven't been doing much at all, so I thought today I'd get out and uh, check out this uh, area here again, which is where I found uh, that small amount of gold, the flower gold, if you've seen that video yet. Um, anyways, uh, I haven't been able to do much because it's winter, and winter means snow, and there's been lots of snow this year. But uh, the last couple weeks we've had a thaw, so it's been a rain, and it was raining pretty good today, but it stopped. I decided to come out and get a better idea of the deposits here, because if you remember, I, I, uh, I did one sample, uh, just a quick sample, and I found a bit, a uh, tiny bit of a small flower gold. So um, I thought I'd come back out and re-examine the uh, bedrock here. As you all know, uh, when you get a rock wet, you can see it's... Um, it's, you know, it's colors better, they look uh, cleaner when they're wet, and you can tell what they look like a lot better. And since it rained, all the rocks are wet, so it'll be easier to um, check out the deposits and uh, formations in the rock here. And that's, if you remember, that's the little area where I sampled. Ah, oh, here's some uh, quick information again. Yeah, I've mentioned this a few times in the other videos, but here it is again. These rocks used to be sedimentary, and uh, they changed to metamorphic rock, and it is uh, it is now nice. Sediments from these ocean, these ancient oceans, were deposited way before the, I believe it's called the Cambrian time. Then eventually, due to the heat and pressure, these rocks changed into metamorphic rock, and it is called uh, nice. So, yeah. So through all, all these, uh, the metamorphic rock, there are um, granite intrusions and pegmatites, quartz veins, and all. the other thing is um, most of the gneiss in this area has been heavily myelinated from the shear zone from the detachment faulting that uh, went through here. So this is basically myelinated gneiss with pegmatites and granite intrusions and all kinds of stuff. So it should create tons of mineral rich areas and deposits. Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's really wet in here, there's all kinds of water dripping. So, right there, there's some foliation there. There's, as you can see, the uh, layers right there, either quartz, feldspar, or whatever. That vein right there, that vein right there has been foliated and it's all smushed and bent. It's got all kinds of bends in it. And there's quite a few little skinny uh, veins going all over the place on this rock here. And it's been got heavy foliation all over it. So moving on over here, see this black rock right here? This really dark area. That is mainly uh, I think it's called hornblende mineral. And there's another mineral that's just like it. It's got another name, and I believe it starts with an A. But there, are, I think it's almost impossible to tell the difference between the two if you don't have a microscope. So we'll just call it Hornblende because they're, they're pretty similar anyways, but um, as you can see, it's this dark layer right here, and it's loaded with uh, garnets. There are just tons, just loaded, there's just tons of garnets, it's just loaded in here of garnets. So, and that layer shoots up that way, it comes down, and it kind of disappears right here. There's a little bit of it actually right there. Come down here, and... Uh, here it is again. You have more of that horn blend layer of the garnets. And it kind of disappears right here. But then if you look, if you follow this layer here, see it all? Here it is again. And then it cuts down right here and uh, kind of heads down, down this way. Kind of zoom in. Do you see the garnets in there? I'm not sure if you can see that. It's loaded with garnets. So what this could have been, uh, the horn blend layers here, right here and up here uh, during while these were still sedimentary rocks in the ocean like I said mentioned they were in a, this area there was an area of uh, rift so the uh, ocean crust began to pull apart which allowed um, uh, basaltic intrusions to fill the cracks in the sedimentary rock so the salt the salt rock cooled into what is called probably gabbro or just basalt intrusions within the sedimentary and then due to metamorphism the minerals changed into what is here now, which is lots of hornblende with um, garnets, just loaded with garnets. And they actually have a name for that type of deposit, but um, 
I can't think of it right now. I might, yeah, I might put it in, in the video, so. Anyways, there's the, uh, the horn blend with the garnet layers right there, and uh, there's another bit of it um, right in there. Anyways, there are all kinds of hydrothermal deposits, mainly um, it looks, there looks to be a uh, pegmatite nearby. Many of the quartz uh, veins here and quartz layers contain many mineral impurities. So if you look here, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Um, here's a quartz layer right here actually, see that? I, should, I think that's the one I showed off earlier. Um, there's mineralization everywhere through here. There's all kinds of iron and there's lots of sulfines. This area here looks really good. You see that? This right here, this rock right here actually might be the main pegmatite intrusion. Um, it's got very large um, uh, masses of crystals. Uh, not crystals, just uh, quartz. It's got very large quartz, so this might be the pegmatite right here. Um, there's a spider right there. And there's that quartz. Oh, there's a vein of stuff right here. And just over here, there's more quartz. This looks like a really good area here. That's just above the mineralization area here. Take a look at it. Oh yeah, this is like uh, on the edge of a pegmatite intrusion somewhere, so lots of hydrothermal activity from magma. Following this, most of the uh, veins are shooting up this way, so I just went up the hill a little bit right here, and some quartz there. There's a quartz stain right here. See that stuff? Stuff looks pretty good. Just pulls right out of there, look at that. That looks like some good quartz. Chunk of quartz. Here's that uh, horn blend garnet stuff. Moved a little bit further to the right, that's where I just was. There's that big boulder with all the garnets and uh, iron. This is pegmatite looking stuff here. Lots of quartz, minerals kind of veins up right here. There's something I didn't mention in my last, uh, the last video where I did the sampling here in the flower gold video. This area here actually has uh, a few uh, sulfury smells. Uh, in 2016 I was walking by this area and um, smelt some sulfur. I'm like that's that's weird. So checked it out and discovered there are gases uh, rising out of the earth in this area here. So I'll show you a few of those areas the vent areas here. Right in there. The gases come out of like little openings and cracks, right? Like like this one. That's one area here. And here's the biggest one right here. Yeah. There's gases coming out of it right now, actually. So uh, there's been a few days um, uh, where you can actually feel some noticeable heat, but um, that doesn't happen too much, actually. There's only been a few times where you can really notice the heat coming out. And there's been a few times where it's actually uh, visible steaming. And the last time it did really noticeable steaming was a year ago um, in December. This is another area where there have been gases and heat coming out before. And there are gases coming out right now. I can smell them, but it doesn't smell... I don't know how to describe it doesn't smell uh, like anything I've kind of smelt before so you know nothing sulfury but once in a while it, it kind of changes over time so yeah these are more areas where gases escape so again lots of uh, yeah there's big pegmatite stuff right here all over that right there that looks pretty good. Mix them. That's like iron ore kind of stuff right there. Look at that. It's all rusted. Red. It'd be fun to gather some of this stuff and smelt it. Might have to do that one of these days. Smelt some iron ore. That'd be pretty sweet. And here is another area where gases have been escaping. 
Um, it's a big fracture, it goes way back in there, but then just a few feet in, there's all kinds of this rock that's been smashed in here. So it's kind of like a false floor underneath this. It just drops straight down, kind of at, well, not straight down, kind of drops down at an angle back in there. And I did manage to get a snake wire camera in there to kind of check it out. Uh, I'll have to retry it because it got uh, jammed in there a couple times, but I uh, found a few interesting things. Uh, I'll show them, on, show them on here. I found a few, uh, some kind of mineral deposits. There's some white kind of crusty, some white minerals that were on the um, walls of the fracture. And they were all over the sides. There were a few uh, crystal looking structures growing within fractures within the uh, side of the wall. So there were a few things down there that were interesting looking. So. Thought I'd show you guys this real quick too. Right here is a geologically young fault line right here. Let me try to get over here without dying. All kinds of loose rock. Ah, right here. See that? You got one side of the bedrock right here. And then here's the other side. And right in between you got all this fractured rock right down the middle. See that? And there you see it a little better. Right there. See that? See the vein right there? Vein hits the fractured rock, disappears. I believe that's it right there. So this looks to be a small, uh, normal fault. So, yeah, that could be one of the reasons why there's gases coming out of the earth here, because there's a small faulting maybe. And check that out. Looks like a beaver's been chewing on this. He's a little far from the lake. So that pretty much does it for today. Showed you guys a little bit of the um, hydrothermal deposits. So I hope, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll concentrate on the quartz there. I want to collect a whole bunch of that and maybe uh, process it. Yeah, and I also showed you guys the uh, little bit of the earth gases that are coming out of here. Possibly low geothermal activity that is under going on below us. I've been checking out these gases in areas for uh, since 2016 for about a year or two. So I've been keeping an eye on the area. So, And activity here kind of fluctuates. The gases can either get stronger or weaker. And sometimes they're strong enough where they produce steam, sometimes there's heat, sometimes there's not. It just kind of fluctuates, and the, the best year, the strongest year I saw it active was in 2016. So, it's a little strange, but I have to keep an eye on it. Hopefully later this year when all the snow melts, we can make our way up into the mountains. Check that out. Go back to the creek. Process all that stuff and see if there's, we can find anything. Hope you guys are all having a good day, and I'll see you all next time, and hopefully we'll be doing something out here.